What is learning and how does it occur? This is a question that we as teachers need to be constantly asking ourselves. Princeton defines learning as a process that brings together cognitive, emotional and environmental influences and experiences for acquiring, enhancing or making changes in one's knowledge, skills, values and worldviews. In basic terms, learning is a development of one's knowledge and skills through various influences. There are many learning theories that have been created to try and explain learning and how it occurs. These learning theories can help us understand not only how students learn, but how we, as teachers, can cater for their learning needs. In the past, theories have promoted the idea of students being empty vessels. Aristotle argued that the human intellect must be something like a blank writing tablet able to receive the imprint of the ideas that come to be written on it. John Locke, another defendant of this theory, described students as having intellectual emptiness, which needs to be filled by their teachers, who are the focus of the classroom. However, the majority of theories today promote students as being the focus of the classroom, rather than having learning being teacher-based, as this was considered to be normal in the past. Considering students as empty vessels, no longer applies as their attention spans have decreased, so this theory no longer works in classroom environments. Students also do not absorb content from being lectured at. Teachers today need to be creative planners as learning occurs best when teachers creatively plan their classroom and lessons to cater for students' learning needs. The constructivist classroom recognises that learning should be student-focused. Learning occurs best when the students become actively involved in their learning through discussion and group work. The teacher's job for this classroom is to be the facilitator, guiding and supporting their students in their learning. Jean Piaget contributed to this theory by introducing strategies to be used in the constructivist classroom. Piaget introduced the four stages for the young learner. The first stage is called the sensory stage, which is from birth to the age of two. This stage of life is when the child's senses are the most dominant. Stage 2 is the pre-operational stage from age 2 to 7, where the child starts using their brain and intuition to make decisions. Age 7 to 11 is the concrete stage, where a child begins to use logic and is reliant on concrete situations. The last stage is the formal operational stage, age 11 plus, which is when the child begins to associate their thinking to probabilities and analogies. Lev Vygotsky also contributed to the constructivist theory by linking constructivism to social learning. He believes that learning occurs best when education and socialization are linked together. Technology has a huge influence on students today as it is more advanced than technology was 10 years ago. Teachers today are competing with social networks such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Snapchat in the classroom. Due to this factor, students' attention spans have significantly lessened when teachers take the more traditional approach of teaching from a textbook. Learning occurs when teachers allow students to have access to technology where they can gain knowledge and share that knowledge with others. Seaman believes that rather than having learning being inside the learner, the learning can now be outside the learner by using technology and socially interacting with fellow learners and communities. Individual differences pertain to the characteristic differences or variations of groups or individuals. From an educational perspective, individual differences relates to the various ways that students learn. Learning occurs best when we differentiate teaching to meet the specific learning needs of students across the full range of abilities. As 21st century teachers, it is necessary that we differentiate our teaching, that we plan lessons so carefully and creatively that each and every student in our classrooms can connect to, relate to, and learn the content. Learning also occurs when teachers include social and emotional learning as an integral part of the classroom. Social and emotional learning refers to the development in a student's social and emotional skills, skills that are a necessity to succeed not only in school, but in the workplace and in the community. It is our job as teachers to provide the opportunities in the classroom to develop social and emotional learning and encourage social interaction and the full spectrum of feelings. Activities that do so include group work, collaborative learning and discussion-based learning. It is important that we create a safe and supportive learning environment for our students. 
If we structure our lessons and our classroom to support the development of social and emotional skills, our students will be able to relate to others, actively engage in the content and, ultimately, learn more effectively. Learning occurs when teachers are effective in developing behaviour rather than managing behaviour. If we as teachers are facilitating our students' learning, shouldn't we be facilitating their behaviour too? If we look at behaviour like this, we should no longer refer to this as behaviour management. Managing the student's behaviour doesn't solve the problem. Development is a learning process and it is better for learning to occur and also to have a successful classroom environment. A useful way we can help our students develop good behaviour in our classroom is Maslow's hierarchy. By considering Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you will be achieving the needs of your students, which will develop their behaviour not only in the classroom, but for life. As teachers, we need to facilitate the use of metacognition in our classrooms to improve student learning. Metacognition is the knowledge that a person has of their individual cognitive processes. When students can reflect on their thought processes, such as knowing how they best prepare for exams, how they best intake knowledge or how they best memorise content, they can know how they learn most effectively. Thinking about thinking is essential for effective learning and as teachers, we can encourage this by providing immediate feedback, encouraging students to ask questions, giving praise when students present ideas or thoughts, self-evaluating actions and emphasising higher order thinking. Here is a great quote from Confucius for us as teachers to reflect on as we conclude. I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. Learning occurs by doing and experiencing. As teachers, our main goal is to facilitate learning and the most effective way to do this is to have the students experiencing, not simply hearing and seeing.